humans have never stopped looking beyond the horizon. What there is to find is breathtaking, nearly incomprehensible. With these discoveries come a range of possibilities impossible to experience in a single lifetime. Join me on my journey covering a fraction of what our home planet has to offer. You will be taken to some of the USA's most beautiful places and a great part of Australia. You will see parts of the Earth in which humanity has already settled and dominated. But the most significant ones are the nearly untouched places where Mother Nature rules entirely. Slowly stepping into the tropics of Australia's Northern Territory, arid landscapes disappear while creeks and rivers start to develop along with more abundant vegetation and wildlife. Heavy rain and storms being the remains of monsoons further north are an important source of fresh water as the wet season emerges. Suddenly, water gushes from everywhere. This water monitor must have hatched as the water level began to rise. The Edith River ultimately flows into the Catherine River, which carves the massive Catherine Gorge out of a 500 meter thick sandstone layer lying before flatter lands. Many places have limited access in the wet season. Nevertheless, one can always encounter great beauty where nature is protected and ecosystems thrive. Especially in the marvelous Kakadu National Park. This area is not only ecologically significant, but also historically and culturally. Here, one of the highest concentrations of rock art dates back to up to 20,000 years ago. Gunbim, Aboriginal for rock art, represents the connection to activities, the land, and spiritual identity. Beliefs on the creation of landscapes, as well as the establishment of Aboriginal law, were often painted by so-called spirit people. On land, Few non-nocturnal animals can be spotted during cooler parts of the day. Commonly seen mammals include dingoes roaming the park 
as well as wallabies and kangaroos. Reptiles and other animal classes outnumber mammals by far, but most can only be found in places where water is more abundant. This male Australasian darter is drying its wings after having hunted. This female darter seems to be in the process of swallowing a fish. These birds' feathers soak up water, reducing their buoyancy and facilitating the hunt for fish. The comb-crested jacana, commonly known as Jesus bird, does its name justice. The distribution of weight on an area as large as possible to walk on floating wetland vegetation facilitates the hunt for seeds and aquatic insects. The collared kingfisher is one of the few kingfisher species distributed throughout Australia. A majestic female white-bellied sea eagle overlooks the area. White-bellied sea eagles choose a partner for life. This couple's nest must lie up high in a nearby tree. Together, they settle and guard their territory. At last, we spotted what we were hoping for. This is a female saltwater crocodile. She is comparatively large at a length of about three meters. Males are much larger, ranging from 3.5 to 6 meters. This particular male is 4 meters long. Here lies a flooded crocodile nest. Normally, nests are found on land, where the eggs are dug into the ground. This is the mother, patiently waiting to hear the cries of her hatching babies. Sadly, she will never hear them and will risk starvation by waiting for them. After having reached the tropical north, we had to travel 800 kilometers south again in order to head back east. So-called camps of little red flying foxes can consist of up to one million individuals and travel constantly searching for food. We were moving in the opposite direction this camp was, namely from the Northern Territory to Queensland. From the outback further east, the chance of rain continues to increase. Approaching the northern east coast, humidity increases again compared to the inland and mountains start to form. Here, heavy rainfall creates creeks and rivers, such as the Josephine Creek, where we began to see a glimpse of the natural world in the state of Queensland. Often, the tropical rainforest is directly connected to the ocean, geographically and through joint ecosystems provided by rivers. 
A prime example for this is the Daintree Rainforest. Along coastal waters, we find one of many important habitats in this area. Mangroves are halophyte plants, meaning they have adapted to grow in waters with high salt concentrations. In addition to defying harsh conditions of varying salinity, moisture and temperature, mangroves protect ecosystems and the landscape from erosion, storms and tidal impacts. Mudskippers, here moving in front of the saltwater crocodile, are amphibious fish using their unique pectoral fins to walk on land. The Daintree Rainforest is over 110 million years old. Thus, it is no surprise that it is also the most complex and diverse ecosystem in Australia. Insects are crucial to the rainforest, having important functions within the ecosystem. For instance, individual wasp species are specialized in pollinating equally individual flowers. On the other hand, spiders help keep insect populations in check, often with highly specialized methods. The St. Andrew's cross spider's web decorations ought to leer, while this nest-casting spider is expanding its silk between its legs to later propel itself onto its prey to catch it. Golden orb weavers are a prime example of spiders' impressive adaptation to different environments. This species, for instance, produces seven different types of silk, one of which is stronger than steel per mass and tougher than Kevlar. Typically, male spiders are far smaller than female spiders. Female golden orb weavers are six times larger than the males. This specimen has caught some prey, and it will begin dissolving it with its venom to finally consume it. The Daintree Rainforest is truly unique on Earth, and a crucial ecosystem to both nature and humans. Four hundred fifty kilometers down the coast, we find Magnetic Island, eight kilometers off the coast from Townsville. <laughs> its highest point reaches nearly five hundred meters above sea level. In World War II, Magnetic Island's offshore position and elevation were taken advantage of for surveillance and to potentially fend off the Japanese army. The island is also a habitat for diverse wildlife. Reptiles are dependent on heat to proceed with regular activities. This common death adder is awaiting the sun's warmth before it can hunt. It is one of the deadliest snakes on Earth. As we know already, koalas are comparatively inactive. Here on Magnetic Island, their population ranges from 800 to 900 individuals. Wallabies here have gotten extremely comfortable with humans. Some bays are still quite wild and not visited as much due to their accessibility.
Further down the coast, we find a group of 74 islands. The so-called Whitsunday Islands are the result of volcanic activity before the end of the last ice age. The whiteness of the beaches are due to an exceptionally high concentration of quartz. Small coral reefs surround the islands as well, though not part of the Great Barrier Reef, which lies 35 nautical miles further east. We continue to travel south and a bit further inland. In the mountain of the tropical Yungela National Park, dense fog can create an ambience of tranquility and mystery. A curious animal easily observed here is the platypus. It spends half the day using its electroreceptive bill to find prey in the riverbed before bringing it up to the surface to eat it. The platypus is one of the few mammals to lay eggs and possess venom glands. Our next destination is yet another island. This time we drive on it. Fraser Island is the largest sand island in the world, and it is only accessible with four-wheel drive vehicles, as most roads are mere sand paths. As is the island's east coast, which is simultaneously used as an official highway for motor vehicles and a runway for small aircraft. Fraser Island contains nearly 200 freshwater lakes with a large palette of colors. Lake Wabi is the deepest of them, but it is slowly being consumed by the ever-progressing sand dune, year by year. While Lake Bumanjin is known for its red-brownish color originating from organic compounds binding to proteins, Lake Mackenzie attracts many people due to its crystal clear blue water. The remains of a fading cyclone arranged a rather stormy stay for us on Fraser Island. The wildlife here, however, is accustomed to strong winds. This resting black kite is reacting to a fellow individual's cry, while this white-bellied sea eagle takes advantage of the low tide to hunt. Some further recreation and minor exploration were done before rounding up my much-enjoyed travels with my friends and moving on to the next and final chapter of my journey. After having parted ways and sold our beloved car, the next step was to unite in Brisbane with my next companions, namely my father and my brother who had come to join in on the last part of my adventures. We plan to witness a unique natural spectacle. First though, a stopover on Magnetic Island was needed for sightseeing, but mainly for certain training before continuing to our final destination. Hello. 
Cannes, we set off early in the morning to travel offshore, where we would find a paradise known as the Great Barrier Reef. To experience its true beauty, we need to literally dive into this almost alien world. There is nothing like the feeling of overwhelming appreciation of life and nature when personally discovering a world unknown and distant to most people. The Great Barrier Reef is the largest structure on Earth built by living beings, and its more than 350 stony coral species provide habitats for thousands of other species. Coral reefs build the foundation for a chain of ecosystems and are essential for marine life and life above the surface. They give shelter and nourishment to countless fish species, which all have adapted to different habitats, ways of life and behaviors. A mass gray elegantly glides to the ocean floor, where it can rest or forage. Sometimes, raised spiracles functioning as water inlets need to be cleaned. Two Blue Street cleaner wrasses are providing this service. In return, they feed on the dead tissue they remove. Triggerfish have different specialized techniques for locomotion. The tail fin is usually used for faster propulsion to escape potential predators. Their primary one is undulation of their posterior dorsal and anal fins for cruising and maneuvering. This is a titan triggerfish, the second largest of the triggerfish family. It partially feeds on corals. Branches are bitten off with its strong teeth. A school of humphead parrotfish gathers near corals, where they come to forage. They are the largest plant-eating fish living in coral reefs, measuring up to 1.5 meters in length and weighing up to 75 kilograms. Due to their size and their fairly moderate growth rate, this threatened species is easily overfished, usually at night when they sleep. Sea anemones and anemone fish such as the common clownfish engage in mutualism. Being immune to the anemone's venomous tentacles, the clownfish and its potential nest are protected, while they can clean the anemone and may lure in other fish for the anemone to consume. From this subfamily of fish, maroon clownfish are the most aggressive. Defensive behavior is also shown by the cinnamon clownfish. A school of juvenile sweepers covers a complete section of coral reef. Here they seek refuge and are safer from predators. They sometimes do, however, need to dodge larger fish such as this humphead wrasse. Much like the humphead parrotfish, it breeds very slowly and is subject to overfishing as it is considered a delicacy. It is now an endangered species.
Barracudas are predatory fish with elongated bodies with which they propel themselves onto their prey with accelerations close to that of a sports car. This great barracuda is lurking in the open water for suitable prey close to our boat. Another common predator found in the Great Barrier Reef is the white tip reef shark. This individual is being accompanied by two remoras which feed on its parasites and food scraps. Uncontrolled fishing has decreased the number of white-tip reef sharks. Now, this species is listed as near-threatened. The hawksbill sea turtle can be identified by its distinctive sharp beak. With it, it feeds on sponges, of which some are toxic when eaten by other animals. Hawksbill sea turtles are now critically endangered due to pollution and destruction of habitat. The green sea turtle is similarly affected by human activity and is listed as endangered. During a night dive, we witnessed an extremely large green sea turtle, possibly weighing around 300 kilograms. Night dives are an extraordinary experience, being able to see different creatures than during the day. These three ghostly creatures are reef squids. To quickly escape potential predators, they use a jetting technique. A great part of marine life is dependent on coral reefs. This coral may look beautiful, but it is sick. And this bleaching is a symptom of the ocean's warming. At the bottom, this coral is already dead. A large part of the Great Barrier Reef is dying due to human activity. Around the world, we are experiencing coral bleaching crises that are affecting most marine life on our planet. Though the coral's recovery shows to be very slow and complex, there is still time to reverse the effects of past year's mass bleaching events. Four years ago, I went on a journey to discover many beautiful things with many different beautiful people. I had my vision of this experience and this documentary, but the real value was in the actual adventure confronting me with marvels of nature I could have never imagined. For now, they must come to an end though. I filmed as much as I could in order to take you with me and share my experiences with you. Together. We have visited dozens of places in different continents, gazed at various wonderful landscapes, and witnessed countless life forms in various environments, and each and every one of these events has their own story to be told. I saw it as my task to help tell them. And even though all of them are unique, there is one big story they all share. 
It is the story of the immense value that is given to us by our planet's history, its composition, and the biodiversity that life on it has entailed. But it is also the story of influence and responsibility. The human species has developed an incredible influence over natural processes, but neglected the responsibility that comes with it. Since all of the presented footage was filmed, protected areas have declined, deforestation has progressed massively, global temperatures have risen, extreme weather has increased, and the largest mass extinction in history has continued. The gravity of this crisis and its social, political, and cultural implications are very hard to grasp and accept, which is why the majority of people cannot be blamed for many habits indoctrinated by society. I do not expect this documentary to start an environmentalist revolution, not on a personal nor on a social political level. But I do hope to have brought you a small step closer to the wonders of nature, and if you enjoyed it, that is already a great success for me. Thank you for accompanying me on this journey. I am looking forward to taking yet another next step with you in the future.